I initially wanted to talk to you today about the Tier 8 premium IJN battleship Heisen, which, at least I think, is currently available to rent for seven days if you want to pay a thousand doubloons to do that. But instead, I had this match, which I think is a great example of how to make a battleship as ineffective as possible. And, of course, we'll talk about how to do the opposite of that, how to make a battleship as effective as possible. But if you want the TLDR on the Heisen here, I just think it's kind of a mediocre battleship. It's, what, the third Tier 8 premium IJN ship that Wargaming has introduced to World of Warships Legends following the Musashi and the Iwami. And the Heisen itself is sort of like if you took the Awami, removed the torpedo tubes, and added a couple extra gun barrels. This thing has 12 16-inch guns compared to the Awami's 8. No torpedoes. The guns are not supremely accurate. They're very much IJN battleship guns where sometimes the dispersion is excellent. Other times it's like that against the Wooster and, well just makes for sort of a mediocre ship, in my opinion. The reload is also a little bit long, with there being 12 guns, and it's a little bit less comfortable to play than battleships, you know, with a 30-second or even sub-30-second reload that you can find at Tier 8. So, mediocre, I don't really see a reason to play it over, like, the Musashi or the Iwami ships we already have. Anyway... About the battleship thing and, you know, getting onto the topic depicted in the thumbnail, if you take a look at the mini-map, you'll note that we spawned south of the Alpha Cap. Thus far, we've taken some unsuccessful shots against a Wooster, Kronstadt. We've got a radar cruiser next to us on the blue team here and a Daring in the Alpha Cap flipping it. That daring is actually going to be crucial to the outcome of this game. In fact, the daring is going to carry the game. What are we going to do? Well, mostly we're just going to support the daring, and we're going to try to position our battleship fairly well. The friendly cruiser is going to end up taking out the Wooster. The destroyer has been dispatched. No, actually he hasn't. He's run away. So that just leaves the Z-44 and the Kronstadt here. We're going to take a shot at the Kronstadt as he retreats, but I want to direct your attention on the minimap down to the Charlie Cap, because this is the most significant part of this battle. If you look, you will notice that, besides me, every single other battleship in this match is over there by the Charlie Cap. All the reds are to the north, all the blues are to the south, and... For the past five minutes or so, they've essentially been lining up to perform the maneuver that most battleship players perform. This is where the tactics of battleship gameplay end and begin, it seems to me, for the average player in World of Warships Legends. The battleships deploy, they notice the position of the enemies on the map, and they travel straight forward pointing their bows at the enemy, going as slowly as possible, trading shots with the other bow-tanking battleships, perhaps stopping, maybe reversing if things get a little bit too hot, but that's what they're going to do. My teammates, my blue battleships, are all in one grid square together. The red battleships, same thing, and they're just going to slowly come at each other from the north and south of that Charlie Cap, trading shots into each other's bow for literally the entire rest of the game, the next 11 minutes. And this is, well, it seems to be the typical battleship strategy. You push in, you bow tank, and that's all you think about. And as a consequence, I think most battleship mains are primarily concerned about things that are almost entirely irrelevant to how effective their ship truly performs. Things like how many accuracy inspirations can I stack on top of my accuracy battleship commander so that when I'm sitting there still bow tanking and sending salvos into enemy battleship's bows, maybe the dispersion that my shells get will be enough to dial in a bunch of shells to the superstructure and actually get a halfway decent hit instead of bouncing them off the angled bow armor. 
Or, you know, they're Yamatos, or they're just overmatching each other's bows. Anyway, I think that is the sort of level of tactical analysis that goes into how should I play my battleship for most battleship mains. And, well, that is a very limited scope to apply to this class. The battleship at root is sort of like your tank class, yes, so at some points it probably should be drawing enemy fire and absorbing it so that that fire is not absorbed by its teammates with less armor and less HP. There is that aspect to battleship gameplay, but the other aspect is map control. Now a lot of destroyers, or a lot of players would say destroyers are the ones that gain map control because they go out there, they scout, they reveal the enemy's positions, they take the capture circles, much like HMS Daring here, who I can't praise this guy enough. He played this game so very well. In fact, as we've been worrying about this Kronstadt over here, we're no longer going to have to worry about the Kronstadt. Daring is going to take out that Kronstadt, and then he's going to sail south and deal with the destroyer that has been chasing us for the past couple of minutes, the Z-44, and he's going to take that guy out very easily too, leaving us to try to assist our teammates over here. Now, what I mean by a battleship acquiring map control is, yes, it is the destroyer's job to scout and reveal the positions of the enemy, and also to take and contest capture circles and that kind of thing. Well, when the enemy is revealed, it's the battleship's job to find a place on the map where the enemy has to travel past its guns in order to get to some goal. Take this scenario that we have playing out in front of us. We've got our three battleships on our team lined up in the same grid square, squaring off against the three battleships on the reds, basically also in the same grid square. And they're both on the extreme flank of the map near the Charlie Cap. If we want to be effective in our battleship, what do we do? Where do we go? Well, I mean, we could join our teammates in this bow tanking fiesta and just have this sort of still sort of standoff going on where we're just facing these battleships and trading shots into their bows. Of course, we would lose such a contest because we have 16 inch guns and there's two Yamatos over there, which can overmatch 32 millimeters of armor. And, you know, thus we're not going to actually stand up too well to the Yamatos. Yamatos, in fact, won't stand up too well to each other. This has essentially been a contest of who can whittle down whose HP even more. If we want to be effective, then we want to go on a place on the map where we can access the broadsides of these battleships. And in order to do that, all we really have to do is push into the Charlie, or the Bravo cap, rather. Speaking of which, the only player on the red team right now that is doing anything that could in any way contribute to the possibility of the red team achieving victory in this battle is that Des Moines. He was initially with his group of battleship teammates over there, but maybe he's realized that what they're doing and what my teammates are doing has absolutely no effect on the outcome of this game. After all, the blue team has flipped both Alpha and Bravo and held on to them long enough that we nearly have 300 points over the enemy. All we have to do is maintain our control on that on these two capture circles, and even if these three battleships sink our three friendly battleships by the end of the game, we'll still be ahead on points and we'll still win so long as we and the Daring survive. That's less likely, though, if the Des Moines is allowed to take the capture circle. So all we have to do to win this game is to sail into Bravo, sink the Des Moines, and at the same time, we'll have taken ourselves into a position where we can access the broadsides of these battleships, particularly if they ever decide to push forward and, you know, try to brawl my teammates, which I assume is their ultimate end goal. But what these guys are doing, and I don't mean to, you know, insult them or pick on them too heavily, this is what most battleship players in World of Warships Legends do, but what these three reds and these three blue battleships are doing is essentially meaningless. It offers no map control. It's not like any of them are positioned to get the broadsides of, say, this cruiser, this Des Moines, who is actually doing something that would impact the game. No, the Des Moines is left to myself and the Daring, who 
Honestly, the Daring is doing a fantastic job. He's been resetting the Des Moines. He sent some torpedoes his way. I don't think they were especially lucrative, but, you know, he's got to do what he can. And he has been successfully resetting the Des Moines and preventing him from taking the Bravo cap with his guns, which is no small feat, especially since he hasn't really lost a lot of HP doing so. I mean, he's a destroyer fighting one of the ships in this game that is specialized for demolishing destroyers. But don't worry, we have noticed the Des Moines, and even though the Heisen is a pretty slow ship, we finally made our way over here to help the Daring. And meanwhile, you can see the principles I've been describing illustrated. Here is a battleship pushing toward a goal, and he has to go past our guns to do it because of where we've located ourselves on the map. And what do you know? We're able to access that citadel, and now we have over 100,000 damage done. Meanwhile, the Des Moines is in front of us, and as long as we continue to go forward, we'll have this island in the center of the Bravo Cap between ourselves and the Red Battleship, so they shouldn't be able to shoot at us. We can simply continue forward and take out this Des Moines. We need to do that as soon as possible, because even though the Des Moines hasn't managed to flip this cap, he has managed to stop our accrual of points from it, so we're only drawing points from the Alpha Cap right now, whereas the enemy is drawing points from Charlie, and essentially we are even in that respect. So Des Moines has to sink so that we can continue to build our points lead above these guys. The HP bars on both sides of this battleship v. battleship standoff are diminishing all the time, and it's only a matter of time before somebody sinks and some team acquires some points from it. So Des Moines right around this corner, He's radaring us right now. He can see us, of course, but it doesn't matter. He spent this whole time reversing, and so he doesn't really have a way to escape. Plus, he's coated in 27 millimeter armor, and our 16-inch guns can, of course, overmatch it. So our goal, get the shells right into the Citadel, and no. We get denied that, although... All of our shells, except one, basically hit. Unfortunately, we get two ricochets, and so it's not quite enough to take down the Des Moines. Our daring nearly does it, but the Des Moines does get the ram in, and he manages to take us out, which, honestly, it doesn't matter. Now that the Des Moines is eliminated and the threat to the cap has been neutralized, well, that just leaves the two enemy battleships north of Charlie, who are now pushing in toward that very low health last remaining battleship. So these guys on the red team have spent literally, I don't know, 10, 12, 13 minutes sitting in one place on the map, trading shots with other ships that have been sitting in one place on the map. If you wanted to make your battleship as irrelevant to the outcome of a match as possible, I don't think you could do better than either the red or blue battleships. Nothing they have done in this game is significant to the outcome of it at all. They've sat in one place. They have not even attempted to move and acquire map control by finding areas where their guns can prevent other ships from pushing. That is the bread and butter of the battleship. That is what you should be thinking about when you're playing a battleship. Where can I put my ship on the map to access the broadsides of the pushing reds? That's what we were thinking about this entire time. And I'm not going to say I played some sort of spectacular game. I didn't. This game is painfully, what, like average at best. It's only 128,000 damage done and one kill. But... You'll notice when this game ends and the leaderboard is revealed that HMS Daring over here, who again is an absolute chad, is in the top spot with a well-deserved 3,000 base XP for his excellent carry and his excellent destroyer play in this game. And then we're right behind him with 25, 2600 base XP, second on the leaderboard. The next battleship closest to us has less than 2,000 XP. I think it's got like 1,500, and it's one of the Yamatos that was sitting there bow tanking. He's going to be midway down the leaderboard on the winning team. So that should tell you that while those battleships did do something, they did damage, maybe they got some kills, uh, they did get some XP, but 1,600 is the best that they did. Meanwhile, we had 2,200.
We influence the outcome of the battle by virtue of our positioning. They were essentially irrelevant. They had no impact on the win that we got here. And that is what you want to avoid in battleships because they are a powerful class that can dissuade ships from pushing with the threat of the dev strike from all the way across the map. Food for thought, I suppose. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.